Okay, so how is everyone today? Cold. <laughs> Uh, okay, so then we had two online homeworks due last night, one minute before midnight. Under normal circumstances, there'll be one due, one homework due, the, the day before a lecture. Uh, the only reason why there were two is because uh, the university was closed on Monday for Martin Luther King Day. Uh, we have some pages that are due. Uh, there they are. Uh, under normal circumstances, there'll be two or three, not four. The reason why there were four is because, well, again, the closure on Monday. Uh, at the end of uh, lecture today, we'll have a short quiz, and this is the way uh, the course will go from now on. There will be a homework due one minute before midnight, the day before a lecture, and then there will be uh, a few pages due at the beginning of each lecture, and then there will be a quiz at the end of each lecture, covering the same material that you just turned in. So any question about uh, any of these things? The structure of the course. Okay, so then let's get to it. Uh, so we'll just backtrack slightly so that we start in a nice position. Uh, we'll start at section 1.3, radicals. The first remark is about the definition of square root. The following are equivalent. First, that y squared is equal to x and y is greater or equal to 0. So that's one situation. An equivalent situation is that y is equal to the square root of x. So this fancy uh, house that x is now living in uh, is called square root. Uh, but like anything that's uh, old and important, uh, it has uh, more than one name. Another name is called radical. which is why this section is called radicals. Okay, some consequences. Of this definition is that the input x uh, to the radical, well, I'm gonna say to square root for reasons that'll become clear a little later. Uh, input x to the square root uh, must be greater or equal to zero. And the output y of the square root must be uh, greater or equal to 0 also. So, for example, I could ask, well, what's the square root of 49? Seven. Seven. Uh, the reason why is because, well, 
What do you get if you square seven? Forty. Forty-nine. Uh, well, what do you get if you square negative seven? Forty-nine. Also forty-nine, right? Uh, so is the square root of forty-nine plus or minus seven? Yes. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> the square root of forty-nine is seven. Why not plus or minus seven? Why not plus or minus seven? Because the output y of the square root must be greater than or equal to zero. It's by definition. Okay, so then I, I don't dispute at all. I agree entirely that when you square negative seven, you get 49. No dispute. Yet, the square root of 49 is seven, and there is no other. Uh, just seven not plus or minus 7. Okay, how about, uh, okay, what's the correct response if I ask for, well, let's sit, let's just do an easy one then. Okay, how about the square root of 81? 9, right? Plus or minus 9? No, just 9. Uh, what is the correct response if I were to ask you about the square root of negative 100? This is undefined. Why? Very good. So, uh, on the one hand, you can just see that it's part of a con it's part of the consequences of the definition that the input to the to the square root what for this particular case, what is the input to the square root that we're attempting, right? Negative 100. Uh, but it must be the case that the input to the square root is greater than or equal to zero. As a result, this is not defined. A neat, a, a concise way to see that is that, would you please tell me a real number that, when squared, is equal to negative 100? There isn't one. What if you square 10? Oh, that's 100. So, okay, then, wh then what do you get if you square negative 10? Also 100, right? Okay, so it's not going to work. Okay, so this is undefined. Uh, how about the square root of, uh, say, 36 uh, over 25? Very good. So, uh, well, uh, square roots are uh, defined in terms of squaring. And squaring is exponent 2, right? And all last week, we very carefully went over all manner of rules for exponents. Really, you know, <laughs> boringly did it all. Uh, so, just like uh, when you're squaring a fraction, the square goes to numerator and denominator. When you're square rooting a fraction, the same uh, thing occurs, which is to say that this is the square root of 36 divided by the square root of 25. And then, oh, well, those are ones that we know, right? What's the square root of 36? 6. And the square root of 25? 5. Terrific. <clears throat> Any question about this? Okay. Uh, so how about... So I want you to simplify by factoring out all squares. Okay, so let me explain what I mean. So for example, uh, the square root of 108 well what we'd like to do, what we need to do is factor 108. <coughs> so how can we factor 108? 
Are you talking about like breaking it down to ten squared? Uh, like so yeah, something like that. Yeah. Can we do multiplication on the units per minute? Uh, we can. So, what's one of the factors of 108? Two. Two. Okay. So let's do that. Uh, so that'd be two, and then multiplied by what? Fifty-four. Okay, good. Okay. Well, does 54 factor? Yep. It does. How does it factor? What's one of its factors? Two. Two. Oh, it's got another two. So then two multiplied by another two, and then multiplied by what? 27. Okay. Now, what I'd like for you to observe is that we now have a pair of twos. Yeah, we have a pair of twos that are all in product. That are all in product. Yeah. So what I mean is these are dots. There's no there's no pluses and nothing like that. Uh, well, as a result, that pair can come out, right? Another way to another way to write two times two is four, right? So this is just sort of a strange way to write four. So that four can come out of the square root as a two, and so it's like you're collapsing those two twos into a single two when they when they jump out of the radical. So this would be uh, two multiplied by the square root of 27 is what is still in there. Okay. Can we factor 27? Yeah. How does it factor? Three. Okay, it's got a 3 in it, right? So 2 multiplied by square root of 3 multiplied by 9. Oh, 9's nice. Why is 9 nice? Because it it's a square, right? It's, it's three times three, so it's a pair of threes. So the nine can come out. How does the nine come out? As a three, right? When, three, when nine comes out of the radical, it comes out as a three. So this would be two multiplied by three multiplied by square root. What remains in there? Just a three, right? And then, uh, well, can we get anything can we squeeze any juice out of this three? No, right? It's we're we're done here. Uh, but we could we could express uh, two times three is six. So this would be six multiplied by square root three. There's shorter ways to arrive at this conclusion now that you're a little warmed up, right? A shorter way, possibly would have been to observe that uh, we could have done it like this. We could have said that, well, that's the square root of uh, 3 multiplied by 36, which would have been nice to know, right? Why would, have that, why would that have been nice to know? 36 is a square. Right, 36 is a square. How does 36 come out of the radical as? Six. As a 6. OK, any question about this one? You have to really know your times table, so right? Mm -hmm. to that, right? right. Because I'm because to to get credit, I'm going to ask questions like this, and to get credit, you're going to have to show a bunch of steps, so that it is, so that it is absolutely clear that you understand the process and uh, of doing it with on pencil and paper, and not the process of typing it into your calculator, right? Which is not what I'm interested in. Ti already passed this class. Okay, how about another one? Same instructions. Something like, um, say, uh, the square root of 800. What do you think? 
Okay, we can... 104 and... Two, two right? <laughs> so two times four times 100. Okay, so I, I claim that that's a particularly nice way to factor 800 for, the, for this exercise. Why? Because 4 is an easy square, and square root of and so is 100. Right. So the 4 comes out of the radical as a what? Two. As a 2. The, the 100 comes out of the radical as a 10. And then what remains? Square root of 2. Right. And then we could write this as um, 20 multiplied by square root of 2. And then you could have made slightly shorter work of this if you had said, well, this is uh, the square root of 2 multiplied by 400. And if you had been uh, wary enough to know that what's the square root of 400? 20. Good. Any question about this one? Yeah? Do, you have, do we have to put that multiplication dot between the 20 and the square root of 2? No. Okay. You don't have to, uh, but I'm going to do it for probably most of the semester uh, because, um, well, it's just like good, uh, well, it's good teaching practice at any rate. It's like, it's like washing your hands. It's good hygiene. Uh, because, um, well, let's just, let's just talk about it for a second. Of course, when you write, um, when you write 3W like that, in the first place, that looks like sideways W times W. Uh, but when you write 3W, that, that is understood to mean 3 multiply W. That's what that means. Uh, but when you write uh, uh, 3 and then you write it beside 8, what does that mean? 38. It means 38. <laughs> right? And I'd like for you to observe that that's a little bit uh, strange, right? If this one's 38, why is that one not 30W? I'm just saying, right? So then what, what would this one be? Three times eight, right? <laughs> okay, it gets worse. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so we will, we will never do this in this class. So in, uh, in some grade schools, So when you write 3w, when you write a 3 next to a w, that's understood to mean 3 multiplied by w. Right? And uh, when, you, when you write a 3 next to an 8, that's understood to mean 38, unless you write a dot in between, and then it's understood to mean 3 times 8. But what if you write this? <laughs> what does that mean? In some grade schools, this means three plus three fourths. Right? So, th in some grade schools, this means three plus three fourths. And we will never do this. So, in, in particular, in this class, when you write 3 and next to it you write a 3 fourths, that means 3 multiplied by 3 fourths. This is what it means.
So as a result of all these problems, I'll always write the dot. Other questions? <laughs> okay. It was that way in my grade school. Right? I had to write three and three-fourths. Three next to three-fourths means three plus three-fourths in my, it, where I went to grade school. Okay, uh, I, I totally lost track of what I was talking about. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, please simplify. So, same instructions as before. with the additional uh, assuming all variables positive. Okay, so how about the square root of uh, 32 multiplied by w cubed? Okay, so now we've got a variable in there, and that's a little bit disturbing, uh, but we'll deal with that. Let's first deal with the, uh, with the 32. So what would be a nice way to factor 32? Eight, eight and four. Eight and four? Uh, we can do better. 16 and two. Let's do that. I claim that 16 and two is, is slightly better. Why? Right, because, uh, well, 16 is a square, right? So that means that the 16 can come out. What does it come out as? Four. <clears throat> and then nothing more can be done with that two. Right, it's end of the line. Uh, what about the W's? we do anything with those? Right, we can take two of them out because remember, remember that w cubed is just a, uh, you know, a concise, compact way to write w multiply w multiply w. That's what w cubed means. So having a look at those that whole product. Notice that this is all a product. There's no no pluses in here. It's all dots. Uh, can we can we make a pair of twos? No, we can't make a pair of twos. None of that can happen. But we can, do you observe that we can make a pair of w's? So this pair of w's can come out of the radical. And what does that pair of w's come out as? one w. The, it, the radical takes pairs and turns them into singles. Okay, so this pair of w's comes out as a single w. And then how much w is left inside? Just the one, right? So then this would be four times w times square root of two times w. Any question about this example? Okay. So same instructions as above. So how about uh, <clears throat> square root 96 multiplied by x multiplied by uh, y to exponent 7 multiplied by, uh, I don't know, uh, z to exponent 31. Okay, well let's think about it for a second. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a well, I'm put one more. Uh, I'm going to put w to exponent uh, 4. Okay. So now, concerning the 96, 
What would be a nice way to write 96? Six times what? 16 times six, that'd be nice. Uh, so that'd be square root of 16 multiply six, multiply x, multiply y to seven, multiply z to 31, multiply w to four. Notice it's all multiply, not, there's no, there's no pluses. Uh, why is 16 times 6 particularly nice? Because the 4 can come out. Okay. So 4 multiply square root 6, multiply x, multiply y to 7, multiply z to 31, multiply w to 4. Uh, concerning the 6, can we do anything better with the 6? No, right? Because remember, things come out in pairs. Now, the 6 has a 2, and it also has a 3, but notice it doesn't have a pair of 2s or a pair of 3s. Okay, so now, here's an, here's an x. Are there any pairs of x's? Ah, so there's nothing we can do with the x. It's just stranded. Uh, how about uh, the y's? Can we, can we make any pairs of y's? Yeah. How many pairs of y's can we make? Three pair. Three pair. Right? Three pair because, after all, y to exponent 7 means y times y times y times y times y times y times y. Seven of them. And when you have seven items, you can make three pairs. Uh, now, each pair, each pair comes out as a what? as a single y. So since this is the first time I'm doing this, I'm going to do it painfully, and then we'll do the others easily. Uh, square root of 6 multiply x multiply. Now I'm going to do the y's in the following way. I'm going to say, well, isn't that y squared multiplied by y squared multiplied by y squared multiplied by y? and then multiplied by z to exponent 31, multiplied by w to exponent 4. How many, how many y's are represented here? Seven. Seven of them. Seven of them. So when this specific pair comes out, when this one comes out, what does it come out as? A, a y. And do you observe? that this pair comes out as a y, and this pair comes out as a y. So how many, how many y's come out of the radical then? Three. Three. So this would be four times y times y times y times square root of six times x times the one y that couldn't come out uh, times z to exponent 31 times w to exponent 4. And then, of course, we could, we could write this y, y, y as y cubed. That would be nicer. Okay, now, let's not do the same thing with z, right? Rather, imagine it in your head. z to exponent 31, that means make 31 copies of z and put them all in a product. Can you see there'd be, there'd be a lot of pairs? How many? There'd be 15 pairs. Okay, and how many would be left over when you do that? Just one, right? That's because 31 divided by two is 15 and one more. So, uh, we could do four multiplied by y cubed and then multiplied by z to what exponent on the outside? 15, and then multiplied by, okay, now the radical would be 6 times x times y times z times w to exponent 4. Yes? I've journeyed that my mind that I would have made the 
was three Y's as three Y, one step above. I would have written that as three Y mm -hmm. as opposed to Y cubed. So the thing I need to be mindful of, I really don't guess I'm asking the question, mm -hmm. is that because it's all internally inside the radical, it's all multiplication. Mm -hmm. It's going to remain multiplication outside the radical. Right. That's why it's Y cubed. Right. Because, because we have two things. 3 multiplied by y, that is a nice way to write what? Y plus y plus y. Yes, y plus y plus y. Multiplication is repeated addition. So are there, are there adds occurring in here? So it couldn't possibly be 3 times y. Couldn't be that. Uh, whereas, whereas, Uh, y caret 3. Now in this class we basically never write the caret. Right? We always write y to exponent 3 is a nice way to write what? Correct. y times y times y. So these are all product. Right? Exponentiation is repeated product. So, so that's the reason. That's why, uh, <laughs> that's why these Y's <laughs> come out like so. Other questions? Okay, then concerning the W's, can we make any pairs? Yeah, how many pairs? Two pair. Uh, and then how many are left over? None, right? So that means, in a sense, all of them come out. Uh, but when, the du when, when this... When, when these four W's, right, W times W times W times W, when they come out of the radical, what do they come out as? W times W, right? Because, because there were two pairs, and each pair gets collapsed to a single item, so it's W times W. So 4 multiply Y cubed, multiply Z to 15, multiply W to 2, multiply square root, of 6 times x times y times z, and then there's no w's left. They all were smuggled outside. Any question about this example? <clears throat> this is OK? OK, fine. So a remark about absolute value. The definition of absolute value, well, in the first place, the way it's denoted, the absolute value of x is denoted on either side with these vertical bars. This is pronounced absolute value of x. It is defined in the following way. It is defined as x when x is greater than or equal to 0. And it is defined as negative x uh, when x is less than 0. So this style of definition, where you say this thing is equal to, and then a big uh, curly parentheses. By the way, does anyone know the name of curly parentheses? Brace. Just for those of you who like to know the name of things. Uh, such, a, such a style, this is called a piecewise definition. The individual pieces are refer referred to as clauses. So if you ever find yourself teaching college algebra, and uh, you're teaching it in the fall, it will be very important for you to make a joke about Santa clauses. <laughs> 
They made a whole movie about it, right, with Tim Allen. Okay, so then uh, the clauses are uh, numbered top to bottom, uh, starting with one. So this one is called clause, we'll refer to this one as clause one, and this one as clause two. Okay, so I could ask and say, well then, uh, what's the absolute value of 1314? One three one four. Uh, but if you're going to do that, I need you to tell me which clause did you use? Clause one. Clause one. You you need to use clause one because notice that the input one three one four is positive, and that's covered by clause one. So that'd be one three one four. Okay, what's the absolute value of zero? Zero. But wait a second, I thought, wait, which clause do we use? Clause one, I thought clause one was for positive inputs. Okay, good. Greater or equal to zero. Okay, how about what's the absolute value of negative 2018? It will be 2018, but which clause do we need to use? Two. The second clause. Right. Uh, because notice that this, that this input is negative. Because that input is negative, and that's handled by the second clause. So the second clause is telling us that the answer, apparently, we should negate the input. So negative, negative. 2018, which is of course what? <laughs> 2018. Can you say that one more time? Walk, walk me through what, what that, how do you arrive at? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I'm, we're putting something in, some input, and just to give it a specific name, let's call it X. And suppose furthermore that we know that um, x is negative, then which clause are we supposed to use? Clause number two. Clause two, which means you're supposed to negate the input. So be because, because the input is negative, then the answer should be the negation of the input. So the absolute value of negative 2018 is negative negative 2018. So the word negate Mm -hmm. So the negation, for example, the negation of 7 is negative 7. <laughs> and the negation of negative 10 is 10. Okay, normally, under normal circumstances, you don't write this. <laughs> you, don't, you don't write this intermediate step under, under normal circumstances. Uh, how about, what's the absolute value of um, 3 minus pi? And I'm not interested in you typing it into your calculator and giving me some decimal places. Well, in, in the end, we're going to have to, we need to ask ourselves, which clause do we need to use? Why the second clause? Right, pi is more than three. And as a result, three minus pi is a negative value. So this is a negative value. So we need to use clause two. So the answer is negation of three minus pi. But we could write this a little more simply by distributing the negation and, and it becomes what? Right, negative three plus pi. But then we can do slightly better. We can use th two less pin strokes and write this as what? pi minus 3. We can do just slightly better uh, because 
when you negate a minus b, anything that is of that form, then the negation of a minus b is you uh, swap a and b and it becomes b minus a. Okay. Well, I've got bad news, or just news, anyway. Uh, Miss Harris betrayed you more than you know. So, absolute value and square root. Um, well, if you take 5 and square it, what do you get? 25. And then if you square root that, what do you get? 5. five. So here's my question. What is the square root of x squared? It is not x. It is not plus or minus x. <laughs> It is the absolute value of x. Miss Harris betrayed you because she didn't reinforce in you that it's absolute value of x. OK, so to be clear, uh, well, let's do this. What's the square root of 5 squared? Well, what's 5 squared? 25. And then what's the square root of 25? 5. So what I want you to see is that this thing that we just walked through, it is like a process where we took a 5, we squared it to get 25, and then we computed the square root to get 5. And what I want you to witness is that these are the same. Which sort of is evidence that maybe I, that's my alarm for the quiz. We're gonna take the quiz in just a minute. This, the fact that these are the same is sort of like evidence that maybe I'm, maybe I'm mistaken. Okay, but what if we do this? What's the square root of negative 4 squared, like so? Well, what's negative 4 all squared? 16. So this would be the square root of 16. And then what's the square root of 16? 4. So what I want you to observe is that this is like a process, where we took a negative 4, and we squared it to get 16. And then we computed the square root to get what? 4. And in comparison to the previous, how is this notable? <laughs> right. And so in particular, it's not the same. So as a result, the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. Not, not x, not plus or minus x, the absolute value of x. Uh, good. Any question about this? OK, so please put away your things. The only things that can be out is a writing utensil uh, and a permissible calculator. Once you have uh, turned in your things, uh, sorry, once you've completed the quiz, I need you to turn it in at the front, and then you're free to go.
Okay, so so the bubble thingy is your net ID. That's what you use to log into Blackboard. So it's not your student ID, it's your net ID. Yes? Uh, so good luck. <laughs>